Standing proudly on the terrace balustrade at Sueby, two Roman goddesses stare out to sea. They are Flora, the goddess of flowering and blossoming plants, and Ceres, the goddess of grain, agriculture and the harvest. The Romans believed that it was Ceres who had first taught humans how to farm, that she kept the land fertile and gave the harvest. A consort of Jupiter, together they had a daughter, Prosperina. When she was a young woman, Prosperina was tricked into marrying Pluto, king of the underworld. However, Jupiter agreed to allow her to spend eight months of the year with her mother before returning to the underworld for the remaining four. The Romans believed that it was in the spring that Prosperina left Pluto to be with her mother. Happy at the return of her daughter, Ceres allowed the plants to grow and ripen, ready to be harvested in the summer. But in autumn, when Prosperina had to return, Ceres changed the leaves to brown and orange to please her daughter with their colours. Then, after she had gone, Ceres would plunge the world into winter until Prosperina returned the following year. The statue of Ceres at Sueby Hall shows her standing, dressed in the clothes of a respectable Roman woman. She wears a wheat crown or diadem, and in her right hand she holds a wreath of corn ears. These symbolise her role in agriculture and the harvest. The object in her left hand is more difficult to interpret, as nearly two centuries of North Sea weather has led to a loss in definition. It's most likely a spray of corn, but Ceres was often portrayed holding a burning torch, a reminder of her search through the darkness of the underworld for her lost daughter. The statue of Flora also wears a crown, but this time of flowers, and she holds a wreath of flowers in her left hand. She too is dressed in classical costume, but her clothes are more sensuous than those worn by Ceres, and her shoulder and the top of her chest are bare, a reminder of her role as a fertility deity. This is somewhat more modest than many pre-Victorian depictions of her, where she is often shown with her breast exposed. In a similar vein, her right hand holds up the hem of her cloak to suggestively reveal her ankle and calf. Both the statues are fractionally smaller than life-size, and are cast rather than carved. Like the other statuary on the estate, they were most likely purchased off the shelf as part of Yarborough Graham's development of the garden. They are unique among the estate statuary, however, because we know that they have always stood on the balustrade, as they feature in two paintings of the terrace by the Reverend Kilvington, who documented the estate in watercolours in the 1840s and 1850s. The choice of these two goddesses for such a prominent position at the front of the house is a fitting one, as goddesses of agriculture and flowers, what better deities could be chosen to watch over the culmination of Yarbrough Graham and his father's achievements? Over the course of 50 years, they had, between them, converted a modest villa into a country house enclosed in a private landscape of parklands and pleasure gardens at the heart of a successful agricultural estate.